Welcome, everybody. One of the things that I'm the most excited about in uh, Team Sid V10 is a bunch of updates around working with and integrating with the various different version control systems online. I, for example, use both GitHub and Bitbucket for a lot of what I do. And I'm sure you're all familiar with what it's like to set up a project and need to fumble around and find that URL to get access to one of your repositories. And as you have more and more projects, you have more and more repositories and you have more and more URLs that you have to fumble around and find when you're setting things up. And it's not a huge hassle, but it's always nice to have something that helps us bring these pieces together a little better. And so one of the things you'll see in Team City 10 is great support for quite a few different version control platforms online, uh, both GitHub and Bitbucket, as I mentioned. And also you'll see a lot of features around TFS as well. And we'll see some of those today. I wanna first just start out taking a look at some of the Bitbucket and GitHub integration to get some projects set up and going here and to show off some of the new features of Team City. So one of the first things that I've done, and I did this in advance because there's some credentials involved and I didn't wanna fumble my credentials and accidentally show something that I shouldn't, but I came into my Team City setup and under the project settings here, you'll see there's a connections tab now. And inside of that connections tab, we can define connections to various different providers online. And you can see here, we have options for GitHub Enterprise. Let me click on the add connection. This might be a little bit bigger. You'll see there's GitHub Enterprise, you'll see there's github.com and there's Bitbucket Cloud. And all you have to do with one of these is pick an option and you'll be presented with a dialogue that helps you walk through this process of integrating with a version control platform. Um, there'll be a little link here. For example, if I do GitHub, let's go down one. There'll be a little link here to help you out. You can just click on the uh, link here and you'll be taken over to GitHub where you can define uh, an, op an OAuth application and you can set that up for Team City. then. You can come over and copy in a uh, simple client ID and client. That's all you need to get started integrating with um, GitHub. And the same thing is true for, Bit, uh, for Bitbucket. So let's take a look at these. So I already have defined these, so I won't show that process. Um, but I've got GitHub set up already and I've got Bitbucket set up already. And so that's how you begin that process over in the connections tab. Once you've done that then, you'll notice Oops, sorry. You'll notice then when you are editing your settings, sorry, there's having a little problem with my computer. When you come down to the options here to create a build configuration, a template, or a sub project, and you click on one of these, you'll get some new choices now. In the past, we're used to what is now referred to as a manual setup process. And we also had an option to point out a repository and past versions, but now we've got this nice ability to point at a GitHub repository or a Bitbucket repository and streamline this process. And we can do this either from the build configuration uh, perspective or we can do this from the project perspective. So when I click on sub projects, I can, I can create an entire sub project around a GitHub repository, for example. So let's actually walk through doing that. Now the difference is when I do this with a sub project, I'll actually have a new project as well. If you do this with just a build configuration, it'll just add a new build configuration for you. So just by clicking on point to a GitHub repository, uh, I'm now presented with an option to sign in to GitHub. So the first thing that was set up the connection defines an OAuth application. And if you've worked with OAuth before, you know then your individual users will have to sign in with their own credentials. So I can click here to sign in to GitHub. A little dialog will pop up and you'll see that uh, I'm asking, or Team City here is asking for permission to my WSM demos uh, user on GitHub. And in this case, I'm needing permission to be able to read and write repository webhooks and also access repositories. I can simply just click on authorize application. And of course, I think I signed out. Give me one second here. I'll save some credentials so I wouldn't have to do so much typing today. Okay, I can paste that in here. 
And just like that, I'm in a, I am hooked up into my GitHub repositories. And if you look here out on my GitHub uh, repository, I don't have much here for this user. I only have two repositories set up. Over in Team City, you'll see those same two repositories here. So I can just click on one of these. I'm going to click on this TC10 Spring Pet Clinic example. And then just like that, I can provide a name and a build configuration name. And this is because this option to point at a GitHub repo or a Bitbucket repo is creating both a project and then a configuration within that project. I'll just leave the defaults here and proceed. And notice that I'm inside of this webinar subproject. So this new Team City 10 Spring Pet Clinic project will be created inside of there, and inside of there will be the new build configuration that I just set up. So the process of setting up a build can be uh, quite rapid now. Uh, I don't need to fumble around with the URL. And then once I've got the build set up here, I can just use the built-in auto detect steps, which are helpful in the majority of the cases to find what I might like to do. So for this example, I can just select Maven. And that defines then a build step for me for a Maven build. You'll notice over on the left-hand side here, the version control settings are already set up. So everything is wired up and good to go, pointing at that Team City 10 Spring Pet Clinic repo that I uh, selected in the previous screen. And you'll also notice that there's a version control trigger that was already added. So all this is set up automatically. I'm going to hop back to the Maven build step. Even though everything was set up automatically, I can always come in and override some things. For example, I'm going to switch to packaging the application. And I'm also going to point the JDK at version 8. So you can always come in and override any of these settings, but a lot of this is taken care of for you out of the box. Uh, just speeds up the process of bringing a new project into Team City. It should just be one click to uh, point at the right GitHub repository or Bitbucket repository, and then one more click to select the right build steps from the auto-detected options and off to the races. So at this point, I should be able to just go ahead and click Run on this application. And within a few seconds here, I should have a build. And you can see it's already kicked off and running. Now, one of the things you might notice is that the Team City 10 UI has been updated in many aspects. There are many new uh, images and artifacts used in the UI to make it look good on all sorts of displays, including high-res displays. So there's been a facelift as well in Team City 10. And you can see we've already got some tests passing here. And pretty soon I should have a finished build, just like that. I didn't have to do much fumbling around. I really stayed inside the Team City interface to get everything set up. A uh, really convenient workflow for getting up and running. But the integration goes beyond just getting the build configuration created. That's just a one-time thing. There are other things we have to configure as well. And we can configure those just as easily as we did with the repository. For example, we might want to integrate with GitHub issue tracking. So we might have our issues out in GitHub. So this TC10 Spring Pet Clinic, I'm probably using GitHub issue tracking if I'm using GitHub for version control, or I might be. Or I might be using Bitbucket's issue tracking if I'm using Bitbucket version control. Or I might be using TFS, TFS's work item tracking if I'm using uh, Visual Studio Online, for example. In all those cases, then I'd like to integrate with those issue tracking systems so that I can have some support between getting from Team Cities interface over to those uh, whenever I refer to an issue in a commit message. And also, uh, late, later on, we'll see how we can integrate with commit information, so how we can push information about pull requests into GitHub, for example. So we can have tight integration and be passing data back and forth between these systems just to make our lives easier and to automate a lot of the testing we'd like to do and get that information put in the spots we might like to have it. So let's see what some of that looks like. So I'm gonna come back and I'm going to go to my webinar project and I'm gonna edit the project settings for that. Actually, I'm gonna hop up to the root because in a lot of these cases, you'll want to define your um, connections and issue trackers at the root of your configuration setting, just so those are available everywhere within the Team State interface. You can always put this stuff at a lower level and nest it inside of a project, but the root level is always nice to begin with, uh, unless you have a reason to kind of hide it away. So on the left-hand side here, you can see issue trackers. 
And you already see that there's one set up. This was just me getting ready for this demo. I'll walk through what it's like to connect, create a new one because that's what uh, is new in Team City 10. When you click the create new connection here, and I choose GitHub from the types here, because remember I have my issues over in GitHub that I'd like. I now have this little GitHub icon, and that's because I've made a connection out to GitHub. And so now I can choose again, this Team City 10 Spring Pet Clinic repository, and boom, everything's filled in for me with an access token and the repository URL and a display, a display name by default. So I don't have to do much here, I can click Test Connection, and I just have to put in a valid issue ID, so I know that two's valid. I can click test then, and you'll see we can even pull back some information here. Document me, please. I believe, yep, is right here over in GitHub. So this is working. I'll just cancel out of that dialogue and go ahead and create this connection. And now you notice there's a new connection set up for my Spring Pet Clinic project. So I can go ahead and use issue tracking for this repository as well. This significantly streamlines the process of doing this, whereas before you would have to type those credentials in again, copy a URL over again, it's a lot of work. And you, um, it, of course you would do it if you wanted the integration, but um, this is just a nice icing on the cake for you. So now once I have that in place, I can come back over to my projects. Actually, let's use this. There's a new um, pop-up for searching through projects in Team City 10. I'm trying to remember to use this because it's really convenient, but you just hit P on your keyboard and this little pop-up will come up and inside of here you can just type in whatever you want. And I believe this was Team City 10. Yep, so by doing that, you can see that a few things filtered down versus before. So TC10, whatever you'd like to search for, filters down to what matches and then you can use actually keyboard shortcuts here, up and down arrows, just to hit down to Whatever it is you want to navigate to, we can hop out to the build here. And then I can come over to the change log tab. And I might have to and go, let's see here. Yeah, it's not picking up any changes yet. I might have to wait until we do a few changes to be able to see that uh, issue tracking integration. But um, well, I'll come back to that. Um, actually, I do want to take a moment, just make sure there aren't any questions and uh, that the screen is coming through okay for everybody. Um, there are a couple of questions, but they're, all of them yeah. are answered. I would just read out um, maybe two of them. The first one was from okay. uh, Evaldus. He's wondering whether uh, an upgrade from uh, Team City 9 to Team City 10 is straightforward. And the answer is yes, it is straightforward uh, uh, as long as you have the license uh, available. Um, and also a couple of people were wondering about uh, the Bitbucket server support and the, oh, ans yeah. the answer. Yeah, if you could answer that. Uh, yeah, so what about Bit just can they use this stuff with Bitbucket server as well? Yeah. So we there's Bitbucket cloud support. I don't know, is, uh, is the enterprise as well version supported? I have not tried that out. I've only tried the bitbucket.com. So it, yeah, so the, the, I would answer that. The answer is not it's, it's not supported at the moment uh, as uh, GitHub and Bitbucket uh, Cloud are supported, but uh, you can still use it uh, with Bitbucket Server. It's just you won't be able to create projects directly from uh, from that like two two click experience. But uh, but the support is okay. Current. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I assume that there will probably be some support for. Other things down the road maybe as well, uh, now that this is pulled in. You'll also notice in this release that the commit status publisher plugin was pulled over and bundled now, and a lot of things were added to it. So I think as we move forward here, people will see a lot more support for a lot of different things uh, with regards to all the different integration, uh, integration points that we might like to have with uh, control repository systems. So. All right, so we've got issue tracking set up. We'll be able to see that here as we move throughout this demo. Um, the next thing I wanted to see if I can get to work is the flaky test detection because I already set up a test in this project that should be flaky unless it decides not to flake. So I'm gonna run this again and just see if I can get a failed build this, uh, failed test this time. We'll give this a second to run. So one of the things that's problematic for us is if we have tests that seem to fail, like here, for example, I haven't changed anything in the repository and all of a sudden I run again and I've got a build failure. 
So Teen City now has uh, some heuristics built in when it's analyzing test results to try and figure out if a test is flaky. And there are many different ways it goes about this. Uh, one way that's easy to trip this if you want to test this out is just put a test in that will randomly fail. So <laughs> I have a, a flaky test set up called I am flaky here. And this test ran, just generates a random Boolean. So obviously it's going to fail. Sometimes it's going to pass other times. So you're going to try that out, maybe set up a random test if you don't have something already that's flaky. Anyways, the nice thing is that we'd like to maybe get some visibility to these tests. I know that people try and go to lengths to mark these tests sometimes as um, problematic or potentially broken. And then all of a sudden they start passing again, and then maybe later on they start failing again. And so people try and create these maybe offline workflows to mark these tests, and that's just a bit of a hassle. But so what if Team City could just figure this out for you? And you can see here Team City's already marked this particular test. Not only is it marked it as failed, but over on the to the left of it, it's got this special icon. And if you hover over that, you'll see that it's got a little information here saying this test looks flaky. And the heuristics are. Um, are, are online if you want to access them in the documentation. But uh, once you see something that looks flaky, you can, or sorry, if you want to see something that looks flaky, you can come here in the overview tab. You can also come up to the project level and you'll see a new flaky test tab. And right here, you have a summary of all of the flaky tests. And then just like any other failing test in Team City, you can come in here and you can take ownership of this to start an investigation. The next thing is you have visibility now surface. So you don't need to create an Excel worksheet or try and find some way to mark these tests as flaky, like maybe renaming them with flaky in front of them or whatever it is you do. You don't have to do that now. Team City could just figure this out for you and pull all these tests into their own dedicated tab so you don't have to do that. All right. Give me a second here. I just lost a little bit of my connectivity. My computer's not happy. Well, um, well, I'm, hopefully my computer's recovering itself. I'm going to come over and talk about the next level of integration. Yep, okay, I got my computer back here. Uh, so we've looked at issue tracking, but we don't have anything yet. We'll get some um, commit messages going, and then we'll have some stuff to look at. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is commit status integration while we're on the subject of integration with version control repository systems. And so this will work for Bitbucket as well. And let's come over to uh, – first I need to come up to the repository level. So if I go to edit my project settings, my VCS – uh, repositories happen to be on the root level, so I can come here for that. What I need to do to get uh, commit status working, what I can do for you is a small demo of a pull request in GitHub, and this will also give us the ability to look at some issues. So I can come up to my repository that I just defined, Team City 10 here, and I can edit this because when I set this up, I didn't specify anything but the default branch. So if I come in here and I add some more settings in here, I can point at other branches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab pull requests from GitHub. So anything, that any pull request that's created, I'm going to pull that in as a branch and run tests on it. And I'm grabbing the merged branch by default here. You could also grab the unmerged with head. And I'm bringing that in so that we can test what the merged commit looks like. And then we can get some information over to GitHub about now, before this was all a separate plugin, this is bundled now. I'm also going to grab all of my feature branches so I can show those. And then sometimes I like to uh, define the master so it just shows as master. Sometimes it will show up as a long string, so I'll put that in as well. So I add some branch specifications and then save those. And that gets me the ability to pull in other branches from my repository. Then the next thing I want to do is go ahead and create a pull request. So for that, I'm going to hop over to the command line. 
And I'm going to make sure I'm in the right project here. It's over here. Here we go. Okay, and I'm just going to uh, come in here and create an empty commit because that's the easiest way to if that's the easiest way to set up a pull request. So I'm going to check out a new branch. We'll just call, we'll just be uh, super creative here and call this feature one. And then I'm going to go ahead and commit into this feature branch an empty commit. While I'm at it, I'm going to add number two to this just for fun, as if I referenced that because maybe I was closing that with this commit. So I'll allow an empty commit here with git, and then I'll go ahead and I'll push um, this commit out, and I have to set the upstream, copy that real quick. And I've pushed out a new commit to this new feature branch. If I come back over to the UI for Team City and I come back to the project level, let's see if we can pick that up. In a moment here, that'll start building. So I'll hop into the build level so we can see that, maybe up here actually. And then I'm going to come over to GitHub while that's kicking off here. And I'm going to come over to my repository on the homepage and click down into feature one that I just pushed out. And I'm going to go ahead and click uh, to create a new pull request. So I can come out here to GitHub and create a new pull request. And I'm going to create this pull request versus master. So just all within the same repository. Before I create this, though, I want to go back to Team City and wire up the stuff that I need for Team City to go ahead and build this pull request. So we already set up feature branches. We also need to set up the Git. Uh, we also need to set up the build feature. And you can see here, sorry part of the distraction, but feature one just kicked off. So I'm building feature one right now. So that's just feature one. It's not the merge um, of feature one into master. Next thing I need to do is come into actually the build level and edit the config settings for that. And then I can come over to build features to turn on this integration with pull requests. Under the add build feature, I can come down here into commit status publisher. And now I can publish information about commits over to GitHub, including when I test a pull, a pull request. All I need to do is specify GitHub. And then in here, um, I don't see the option yet for the integrate. Well, actually, there really would be no need for it because I don't need to specify the repository. Um, all I need to do is specify my credentials here for my GitHub repository. So I can put in WSM demos then. Um, the one thing you'll have seen before, some of this was populated when I created a repository for me, which is nice. Uh, this is one last little place where I have to type that in, and that's okay. I'm going to cop copy my password. Where are we at? Come back, paste that in. Okay, so that's all I have to do is specify my credentials for this plugin and save this. So now I've set up commit status integration. So when builds are executed, commit status will be sent back over to GitHub for this particular repository. So now that we've got that set up, uh, let's come up back to, yeah, let's come back to the build configuration home so we can take a look at what's going on. Feature one looks like it's done at this point. We have not built the pull request yet because we haven't created it. So I'll come back to GitHub to do that. Thanks for bearing with me. I'm clicking through a lot of different places here. I have defined a pull request from feature one uh, back to the master branch. And I'll just go ahead and click create pull request here. And you'll notice that um, this is the default GitHub interface for pull requests. You'll notice there isn't quite, uh, there isn't much here yet, but wait a second uh, to see what Team City starts doing. And I might actually split the screen here so we can see both of these things going on. Come over to Team City and try and watch both of these at the same time. And you'll see we already have uh, pull request five here show up. So that's because of that branch specification that I created. And you'll see that there are two pinning commits. I didn't do anything. This is all the version control trigger here kicking off. You can see it's building the merged pull request. So we should have some information then. If I come back over to the GitHub interface, and sometimes this will just show up automatically. Let me um, let me refresh the screen here.
And we'll just give this a second here to run through the build, at least on the Team City side. And that's that's wonderful. My demo probably won't work at all. I must have I might have uh, fat fingered something. <laughs> we'll give it a second though to see if anything comes through. Might not be my lucky day. So while I'm waiting on that, let's come over and click on the changes here. You see this empty commit message that I typed in? Do you see the number two? It's kind of small, um, but I'll, I can click on this here and you'll see that that's a link to the GitHub repository and it pulls me over uh, so I can access the commit over in GitHub. So that's the issue tracker integration. And also you can click this little drop down. Um, sometimes it will show you a little message here. I guess the issue two is not defined at this point, so maybe I used a, a bad number. Now that's actually pulling up issue two, so I don't know why that's not showing, but um, we at least have issue tracker integration. I do not see my, uh, I do not see any luck over here. Let's try the commits tab and see if anything shows up. You should be able to see some of this status over on both of these tabs. I tell you what, I'm gonna look and make sure that I set up this build feature right. So I'm gonna come back and edit the config settings. Go into build features. Ah, that's why. I fat fingered my username. Let's try this again. I wonder if there's some way I can quickly get that. Uh, let's come over to GitHub and just create a new pull request. Maximize the screen here. Oops, wrong branch here. I should go back to uh, the feature branch. And yeah, it's probably going to want me to close this one out. I'll close that out and start over. There we go. New pull request. Okay, again, feature one to master. Hopefully I didn't mess up the password at all. So we'll do round two. So we know in the UI. Okay, so that's set up now. Hopefully this will work. If this doesn't, you'll just have to trust me, I guess, because I'll want to move on to the cool other features I want to show. I'll take some questions right now, though, while this is kicking off so we can save time. Yeah, so uh, yeah, again, mostly uh, all the questions are answered. I'll just read out a couple. Um, so there were a couple yep. of questions from Boris uh, about the uh, Flakit tests being uh, available in REST API and uh, whether we can uh, detect uh, them programmatically. The short answer is not, that is not supported yet. And uh, so please, yeah, uh, create an issue in your track so that we know your use case. Um, okay. And I'm gonna interrupt actually, because I've got, I've got my thing here. I'm sorry. Right. Cool. <laughs> cool. So you guys see here on the right side now that I actually typed in my username correctly, you can see continuous integration slash team city is pointing out that some checks aren't completed yet. This means the checks are running. So we get an automatic update here in the GitHub UI just to tell us, hey, something's going on building our project. This is a part of the GitHub commit status. And you can see here actually now we had that flaky test not work. So we have a failed commit and we have that information over here in the GitHub UI. So we're pushing that information back. So if you're using a workflow where you spend a lot of time over in GitHub, you don't have to get out of that workflow. You can continue to get information about what's going on here. And you can get that both from this pull request screen and also from the commit screen here. You should be able to hover over and get some status. Huh. I can't figure out how to get the hover over. The other thing you can do is click on the details. I think the hover over worked on this one for sure. Yeah, I'm not getting any, not getting, any, not getting any luck here. But you can see here, uh, if I click on details, I can be brought right over to Team City, and I can see the overview of the build here. For example, I can see that flaky test that's failing. So just like that, I have a nice integration between these two tools. Okay, I'll let you read any questions you have, and then I'll move on. Well, actually, I think we can move on because, uh, as I said, there. Okay, already let's on. move on. Right? How are we doing on time? Cool. All right, great, we're doing good on time. Okay, so the next thing I wanna move into is configuration, configuring 
uh, build configurations and well actually all your settings in version control. Now this is not new, this is something we've had since uh, Team City 9 for quite a while now. I've had a lot of different features for ber uh, storing version control in a repository and we've had uh, I believe Git and Mercurial support for quite a while. In Team City 10 you now have TFS support, um, Perforce uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think is also an option. So you have, a, and I believe what SVN as well was added, maybe a 9.1 or something. So there's a lot of choices for storing your settings. But one of the things that wasn't so fun was working with XML files. So that was our option before. Well, now we have the ability to define via code our settings. So we can define that using Kotlin. And I'll walk you through the process of setting this up now. So the very first thing we're going to need to do to use this, and let me uh, let's bring this back over into here and maximize the screen, and I'm going to collapse this down and come back into the Team City UI alone. So one thing I want to do is come to a project that I would like to synchronize with version control, and I'm going to take this new project that I just created, so the Team City 10 Spring Pet Clinic project here. I can come to the settings for this project, and then over on the left-hand side, just like before, there's version settings. And when I click synchronization enabled, what you'll notice now, there's an option for the settings format. And I can set this to Kotlin. And then the regular choices are available here. And I've already set up a repository to write this information into just to save some time here. It's this Team City 10 Kotlin settings repository. So hopefully I remember that when I'm trying to pull this up here. So I can set up a repository then, just like before, I have my options for when the build starts, and then I can set the format here, and I'll use Kotlin. And then I can go ahead and click uh, Apply. But before I do that, let me show you this repository. So let's come over here to Team City 10 Kotlin settings. I'm gonna open this up with IntelliJ. You'll notice there isn't much in here right now. I do have a project to find because I've opened this up before just to make sure it opens okay. So I've got everything set up on my computer properly, but where did that UI go? That's still starting. Give it a second here. This is my MacBook. It is not the fastest of devices. There we go. Okay, so it's loading up my Team City 10 Kotlin settings project. I just want to show you that this is empty so you kind of understand what happens when I click apply. And there we go. All right, so the project view is coming up. And you can see in here, I do have my IntelliJ settings, but otherwise I don't have anything in this Git repository. Just to be safe here, I can do a Git pull. Make sure I've got the latest version of this repository, and you can see I'm already up to date. So there's nothing in this repository right now. Let's hop back over to the web UI and click apply. So now I've turned on just for this Team City 10 Spring Pet Clinic project, and you can do this at any level you want. I've turned on version control storage for settings. So that's not new. We've had XML in the past, but what's new is that I chose Kotlin here. You'll see down below there's some status information about what's going on. You'll see here that uh, this was successfully committed. The font's a little bit small here, but I'll read things for you. So no worries. I can come back over to the command line and do a git pull again. And you'll notice that there's some information that comes across. Let's come take a look at that over inside of IntelliJ. There's a Team City folder that's created, just like before. But instead of the XML files, we now have some different files. Of course, we have this POM XML file. So I just said we, we don't have XML anymore, but we do. That's the Maven project that's created automatically for you. So you can get up and running right inside of IntelliJ, pull in all the dependencies you need. So you don't have to think about that. Um, so that's the, one of the first things that was created. So what I'm going to do actually to work with this project in IntelliJ is right click on this. And I'm going to come down here and add this as a Maven project. So I'm going to import this POM file into my project. And then this will take a few seconds here because this, again, is, is a, a MacBook. It's great, but it's not exactly uh, Ferrari when it comes to uh, CPU. So, all right, it's running through, and it's going to index some things here. While that's happening, let's talk about some of these other files. So as before, some of these folders will look the same. You'll see this is our, 
our project folder here, Team City 10 Spring Pet Clinic. That's the name of the project, by the way, over in Team City. Inside of here, we have a build types folder, a plugin data folder, and a VCS roots. But if I bring this over a little more, you'll notice that these are not XML files. You'll notice, and there's a small little icon on there with a K, that's Kotlin. So these are code files that we can open up. And there's also a settings KTS, and this is kind of the root of this project. Oh, by the way, I need to set up the SDK. I'll point that at Java 8. And so I'll let it go off an index here, but we have this, you can see we are referencing a project object that we're creating here called Team City 10 Spring Pet Clinic Project. I can't navigate to that yet because my uh, indexing hasn't completed, but I can come over here manually to this, this project file here. And this is just the default for how Team City is writing your current settings into this repository. Because once you do this, you can completely take over with code and write this however you would like. So this just happens to be the organization that's set up for you. And you'll notice then, uh, here's the project settings for the project we set up. And all the stuff that was generated for us inside of Team City is brought over into the code version. So right into the Kotlin model for configuring your, set, uh, your application, or sorry, for configuring your build settings. And you'll notice a couple of things here, for example, we are referencing um, a VCS root in this project, and we're also referencing a build type. Um, the VCS root is being referenced likely because of the build feature integration that I set up. Uh, and then let's come over to this build that we created. So this is the build inside of Team City. This is, uh, this is using, again, the Kotlin models for creating build settings to set up a build. And this is our wonderfully named build build and if you look through here you'll start to see some of the stuff that you saw inside the team city ui so let's actually hide the project view for a second and we'll split the screen so i can talk about what's in the team city ui and kind of relate it back to oops need to come over to project home so a couple of things so we have this team city 10 spring pet clinic that relates to this project file here. And you'll notice the name is exactly the same here. And then this build that we have in Team City, so over on the left-hand side here, this build, that's this object over here. And you'll see if I look at the build settings, oops, click on the build itself, and come over to the settings, just to take a look at the settings on a high level here, you'll see that these settings map. For example, here's the VCS settings pointing at Team City 10 Spring Pet Clinic. Well, if we look here, the VCS root is specified as Team City 10 Spring Pet Clinic. Now, this is the name for the, uh, for the object in Team City, the EXT ID, uh, but it looks quite a bit like what we're getting here in the interface as well. And if I scroll down, you'll see Maven is our build step. Well, here's steps over on the right-hand side, and there's a Maven type of step. And here are the settings for Maven. And you can see there's clean and package, if you remember, I overrode that earlier to set package. So the settings that we set up are brought over and there's the um, JDK version eight is brought over as well. So right from here, we have everything. And of course, that's all fine and dandy, but we'd like to do something with it. So I can come in here then. And one of the nice things now that uh, my indexing has completed, I believe, yep, you can see I get auto completion. So if I wanted to add a description for a project, I could say description from VCS. And I have IntelliSense here to work through the build settings. So if I wanted to add some other type of step here, control space or whatever the hotkey is for you, you can bring that up and kind of look through the different options that come up. And you'll notice that these relate to, uh, sorry if I'm for my slow computer, <laughs> you'll notice that these relate to the various different build steps in Team City. Uh, so let's scroll through here. So you'll see here are idea, idea duplicates in the runner, inspections. There's Maven again. Let's see if I can find something else. I'm at a loss for thinking of maybe SSH. Except I don't know what the first letter of it is. So one of the nice things is also, now that we're over in Kotlin land and we are in code land, we can navigate to things. So I can hit F12, for example and make this a little bigger so you can see it. And now I can see some more information about this Maven type. And I might be able to pull this up in the project view under external libraries, you can see this as well. I, think I can also go to navigation, 
and go to declaration. Oh, that's already where I'm at, actually. I want to go to one of the properties, I believe is how I jumped to this without a lot of work. So F12 on the property here for build type. And let's see if I can get to the, that's not gonna work for me. Let's just come over here and poke around. I forget my shortcut that got me into where I wanted to be. But here's the, here's the Kotlin DSL for Maven, for example. And you can drill into this and look at additional things that are available. So if I didn't know what I wanted, I have a couple different ways. I could type and see what IntelliSense brings up. I could also come over here and take a look at some of the external libraries and just kind of browse through them. For example, here's TFS support. So if I wanted to see what I could do with TFS, I could come in here and kind of drill into the different things. And there's a TFS issue tracker. There's a TFS VCS root. So I can see the different uh, object types that I might like to use. And Kotlin is just, um, I, I would say, lipstick on Java. It's a wonderful uh, expansion of Java uh, to make it not such a hassle to work with, not unlike some other uh, languages that you might be familiar with. Uh, I've actually done some development with it, and it was really not that painful to get up and running and get my mind wrapped around it. But um, you're basically working with Java. So if you already know Java, uh, you're going to be able to get quickly up and running. But even if you're not a Java developer, which I'm not, I think you'll find that it's pretty easy to get up and running. And one of the things that I would recommend is set things up in Team City and then generate your configuration so that you can see what it looks like and then you'll have some samples to work off of too. And then also you can peruse and poke around in the libraries here. And the nice thing about this uh, versus the XML approach is now you have all this navigation. You have all these external libraries that you can reference statically typed so you have IntelliSense, auto-completion, um, you don't have to know as much, and it's, it makes it easier for you to discover what you can configure and set up. Let's see this in action be brought back over, though, into Team City. So I updated this description. I know it's not exciting. We'll have a more exciting demo here in a second, but, or at least not, um, it might be exciting. Maybe not exciting for me who's already done it. Let's come back over to the command line, though. We can do a git status just to check on the status of this repository. And if I diff it, make sure the only thing... I changed was adding the description and, of course, a whole bunch of lines of code in white space because I'm a nice person like that. I can come back here now and I can go ahead and I can commit all of this. And I can just give it a message, add description from Kotlin. Push that. Clear out the screen here and come back over to Team City and I'm going to maximize this. And so we should see that description setting come through to Maven. And I believe you could see that show up in here if I just refresh once it picks up. Now, sometimes it'll take a minute to pick up. So what you can do if you want to speed up the process while you're kind of exploring this and learning, maybe it actually just updated. Nope, didn't get lucky yet. Sometimes uh, the best way to go is to come back to the project settings and go to the version settings. And then you can come to this change log tab, I believe it is and check for changes. And then that will queue up checking for pending changes. If that doesn't work, you can also just say, say, hey, go out right now and load the project settings from version control. Those are great when you're testing things out to speed up the process. Let's refresh this and see if we can get that description to come across. Look for the word Kotlin in the page, and I'm not seeing it yet, so it must not be quite here yet. I tell you what, let's do any questions we have now too while this is waiting to come across. All right. Um, yeah, so a question from Abdul. Uh, does Kotlin work automatically for a new, newly created branch? Uh, I don't know that I understand that question. Uh, yeah, well, um, the... Oh, yes. Maybe he's asking... Maybe he's asking if this works with branches. So, like, if you have, if you create a new branch, can you change the configuration in Kotlin? Yeah, uh, uh, there is actually another uh, another question from uh, from uh, okay. the same person. Is uh, can you branch? Uh, can okay. you branch like your TC10 Spring Pet Clinic uh, and automatically create project in Team City? Oh yeah. So you, can you create? Well, you've seen. Um, we've seen how we have feature branches here. We already did that today. So those feature branches by default would be using the same settings that we have in our master branch because we haven't really set anything up different. If you, uh, and even in the past version of this version control settings, 
if I come back over here, um, you can set up branches as well, and you can have those settings then be synchronized with um, a relevant branch. And then what you can do is you have some different options for how that works. Now, I left things right now so that I'm ignoring branches, but if you came in here and, and, cho and chose to use settings from VCS all the time, then you'll see here builds and branches and history builds use settings from VCS. Instead of just one set of settings, if you choose this, then you can actually have settings coming from branches as well. So then you could make some changes on a branch. And correct me if there's anything I've said wrong about that, because I know that um, uh, there's a lot of advanced use cases people work with with that. So I, I might, and also the person that asked the question, make sure that I answered the right question, because sometimes um, people ask one thing and I think they mean one thing and they actually mean another. No, I was mostly right. Yeah, there's, so the uh, branches don't create new configs, uh, but builds uh, in branch uh, in a branch will use the settings. Yeah. Um, do you still have time for questions or? Yeah. So and to clarify what what um, what's going on, we're not creating a new, a new build configuration. Everything's still tied together under one build configuration, which is really nice. Um, if I come back here to the top, you'll see this is one build config, and you can see here's feature one. Here's the master branch, and here are these merge pull requests. So everything is under one build config. You don't have to generate new build configurations. Um, you're, that's all just rolled up together, which is really nice. Yep, another question maybe? And I'll see if my settings have come across here. Well, actually, yeah, I, we've got I, the I new we can go here, ahead. So. Uh, we can go ahead with okay. the presentation. So one thing you can check if you want to know the status of these project settings coming back from VCS is just to check this add description from Kotlin. And uh, this will tell you if the settings have been picked up. Here in this case, you can see that the last change is the one that I had added. So things are good to go. If you don't see your commit reference down here, or if you see a problem down here, this is how you can dive into it a little bit. You can also look at the change log tab for that information. Um, one thing you might want to do while you are working on trying this stuff out for the first time, or if you're actively developing changes that you're kind of like ping-ponging with your Team City, maybe a development server, go into your VCS route and crank up the polling interval on it and see if that helps you uh, get your changes coming across faster. Or just come in here, mash this load project settings button when you're developing your changes. It can speed things up for you. Now that that's across, though, I should be able to come back to, where did I say I put that? In the build level, I believe. And I believe I said we can look at that in the settings. If I'm lucky, hmm. I believe I added that to Maven. Let's take a look here. So Maven description. Maybe I can edit the config setting and see. Oh wait, wait, wait! I didn't put Kotlin in my message. That was my bad. I did that when I was preparing this demo. Um, you can see right here is actually a description coming through description from VCS. Right? Yep, that's what we added here. So description from VCS. So that's coming through here in the build settings. And yeah, so that's how you can define stuff. Now, one thing I do want to point out, unlike XML, if we come to edit the settings over in the interface, you're going to see a lot of stuff is locked down. So you're going to see that the general settings are locked down. You're going to see the build steps are locked down as well. It's almost like someone has locked you out of a lot of the aspects. And you'll even see editing of the build config settings is disabled. And that's because once you switch over to code, Right now, you need to work with code. There's no way right now for Team City Server to uh, reconcile changes. Unlike XML, where things kind of go in predictable places because they only can go in one place and you have no flexibility, with code, you can put things wherever you want now. So it's a bit tricky to synchronize from both the web UI and code. So for right now, if you use Kotlin and code, you have to stay in Kotlin and code. And the rest of these settings will be locked down for you, except for a few little areas things that uh, don't really make sense to be in your code only. That, um, I, be, and I believe version control settings would be one of those then. There are some things that aren't quite locked down, but the rest of it will be locked down. And even some of the settings here are locked down as well because these are configured um, either in other places or in, in version control. And I guess maybe a random tangent while I'm at it, since I'm on this page. Uh, you'll notice if you're, if you're paying attention here to the VCS checkout mode, You'll notice there's a prefer to check out files on agent. This is a new option. 
Um, in Team City uh, 10, part of the focus was just on performance and, and speeding things up. And so one of the things you can do to take load off of your server is to have your agents do the checkouts. And that's always been an option, but it's not been the default. So now we have this option to prefer agents. Now, that if the agent can't do it, the Team City server can do it then. But if the agent can, so basically if the agent has Git or whatever command line tool it needs, then the agent's going to do the work of checking out the files so that the server doesn't. And that's the preferred method now. So that's going to be different. So keep an eye out for that if it throws you off for any reason. Really shouldn't, though, because um, that's a, pretty much a transparent concern for you in terms of where that checkout is happening. Okay, so let's... Um, Let's come back over, and I want to make sure I covered everything I wanted to in the IntelliJ, and then I want to do a little bit a more involved example with the rest of my time here. So I'm going to actually open up a different project that I already created, and it's this pipeline dry run Kotlin settings. Because I really want you to understand the power of having a code model instead of having XML. So uh, if we're talking code model, we can now do things like conditionals. We can do things like loops. We have a lot of different constructs that we have available to us to be able to generate the configuration for our builds. And every time we change something in our version control system, Team City will pick up those changes and regenerate the configuration server side. So whenever you check in to that .teamcity folder that's created, so that .teamcity folder that's generated, anytime something gets checked in here, settings get regenerated. So you can do whatever you'd like in here uh, to generate your build configurations. Now, I don't have a dynamic one with a loop right now. I guess I could have set that up. That would have been neat. But one thing I can do is show that this concept applies more than just at an individual build level. So I can come in here and I could copy. Uh, in this example, I have three builds set up. There are three different test sets. And let me show you, actually, the build chain for this. Let me come over to the webinar and the center dry run pipeline, deploy to staging. You can see here I've got a build chain set up with three uh, parallel builds. I have an initial build, then I have three test runs, and then I have a deploy to staging, for example. So we all have build chains these days because we're trying to automate not just building, but also delivering software and testing it in various different ways. So we have these complex build chains. Well, all of that's configur configurable as well. And actually, I just looked at the time. How long do we have uh, to go in this webinar? Are we ending exactly at uh, 10 o'clock? Uh, we don't have to end exactly at 10 o'clock, but... Uh, we... Okay, I might go over a few, but I'll, I'm going to speed it up. Okay. I'm not going to do another demo of this, but um, I just want to show you what I have here. Uh, this dry run pipeline test set C... I created this after I created this project. So I can just copy this and have a test set D then. I can reference it in a few places. And then I can push these changes via version control back over to Team City, and I can generate entire new steps of the build pipeline. So you can see here, last night when I was working on this, you can see the previous build chain only had two test sets. And then I added in test set C. I did all of that via the Kotlin um, code configuration of my builds. I can add a new build type, um, which is a new build configuration, and I can plug that into the pipeline as well from code. So that's really neat because maybe you have some stuff that's specific to a branch where you're generating some new tests that you want to run in isolation. Well, you could add a new build configuration for that and isolate that from the rest of your tests, and you can have it run in parallel as well, and you can set all of that up from VCS. And what I do want to point out is this is really not that painful. If you look at the dependencies here for test set C, this is the dependency declaration here to refer to that build step before. So this is all it takes. You just say dependency, and then type in the name here, and then snapshot, and that's it. So that's, uh, all of this can be defined via code. And keep in mind, you can have loops as well. So now put your mind to work on what you might be able to do with that if you have some way of externally defining, um, maybe in a file or something, some of your uh, build steps. You could maybe be generating some of this uh, via your own DSL if you wanted to and then t spitting this into Team Cities DSL here so we have these settings at the end of the day. And all of that will be brought over then. And you can completely get out of doing anything inside of Team City when it comes to configuring your builds and delegate back to the people that are actually doing the work to be able to support and manage their build configuration settings as well without maybe even needing to get into the UI.
Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to go over is the cross server pop-up. So I showed you this pop-up right now, and I just showed you working with this on one server. And while I'm at it, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to come over to the command line, and let's see. I'm going to actually do a Docker compose here. If you're using Docker, you're probably anxious about doing things with Team City and Docker. And you might have noticed that recently there are official images, not official from with Docker Hub yet, but official from JetBrains released that you can use to run Team City inside of Docker containers, including both agents and servers. So I've already got this project set up here, and I'll cat out my Docker Compose file here. Pretty easy process to set up, and I have two servers here. Now I'm not going to demo both of those, um, but you can see it's a pretty easy process here to set up Team City inside of a Docker Compose file. And then I can just do docker dash, if I can spell, and I'm going to start what I already have because this would take a while on my laptop once again. So server one here, I'm going to start that up because I already started it before. And we'll give that a second to fire up. And while, we're, while that's firing up, I'm going to come over to the admin of my server that I've been working with this whole time. And I'm going on to nodes configuration. So one of the things that was added, again, in that spirit of scalability and uh, expanding your, your architecture, uh, a lot of people have multiple Team City instances for whatever reason. They might have different um, teams that work independent of each other, want their own instances to have their own little island. But then a lot of times those people want to see what's going on in the other islands. Sometimes people move between projects too. Well, if you have multiple servers for that purpose, or maybe even for reasons of scale, so maybe you have multiple servers to keep the load down on one of them because maybe you, over, you got to a point where you just didn't want to grow one of your clusters anymore. Um, or you really got to the point where you just couldn't grow your cluster anymore after hundreds of agents, well, you can now bring those masters together with this cross-server pop-up setup. And all this entails is pointing at the URL for another Team City server. So I can just point, and I've got this on localhost right now. So this is running on my local machine. And so notice that um, this doesn't necessarily need to have connectivity via the Team City server. I just need to be able to add a server definition here. And it'll test it, and it's going to fail because I don't think it's started up yet. Let me pull up the window here and see if my Docker container is a little bit slow to start on this computer, especially now that I got everything running uh, on this computer. Give it a second, and it'll start up. But the nice thing is then, let me come back here, um, we can now have the ability to search across those servers, and we'll see that in a minute. While you're trying this out, just click the Test Connection button if it doesn't work right away. And one thing you'll need to note is that you'll need cores enabled to be able to support this. And there's a great little pop-up here that'll walk you through that. Basically, you can come here to the diagnostics. I guess I'll show you a few things while we're waiting for that server to start up. Come to internal properties. And you'll see I've set up cores support already for my local host server. So you need to define the servers that you want to be able to make um, cross-origin requests from, well, when the person's in the browser making the request. And then you'll be able to hit the API from one of those, uh, when your users are logged into a browser, they'll be able to hit the API of other servers as well from any of the servers that have this set up. So we'll see what this looks like once this gets up and running. Let's go over to the, oops, nodes configuration, not authentication. Let's paste this in again and try this out. Okay, I'll be impatient. While that's running, I want to actually show you um, Let's uh, pull this out of the way. I'm trying to remember where I put this file. I think I've got it here on the desktop somewhere. Maybe not. Ah, I know what I did. I did it in the downloads. I gotta grab the slides that I just closed right away without thinking. There's another feature that I'd like to talk about for scalability. In addition to this ability to have a nice UI that brings things together for users, I've got a slide here to show this. Team City 10 also now splits apart responsibility server sites. You can have multiple servers involved in a cluster. So right now, this is just two servers. So one limitation right now is that this new builds node mode is 
only available on one additional server, I get the sneaky suspicion that maybe in the future there will be support for more. But for right now, one of the neat things you can do, if you have really high volume on one Team City server, you can split responsibilities and have a main server that more or less serves users' purposes. And then you can have a builds node, which is responsible for keeping track of all the builds that are executing, because that's extremely uh, communication intensive. So you can split these responsibilities apart now and get uh, and boost the scale of your Team City cluster. And uh, a couple of things about this, you'll share a data directory between these two servers, so you need to make sure that it's accessible to both of them. Uh, though actually, I, th I think that's convenient that you don't have to have multiple data, uh, data directories and try and synchronize them. Uh, and then, yeah, the only limitation right now is just one builds node. But the great thing is, if you are saturating your Team City master right now because you have more, lots of builds or lots of users uh, hitting your app, you can split things apart and have a lot more scalability than with two servers involved. So that's another option in terms of scalability. Let's see if we've got, uh, if my Docker container has started on this slow computer yet. Oh, come on. Really? Actually, it might actually be up. Let's test this. Give me some love. Yeah, I see the projects page coming up. So I think we're actually working here now. Give it a second. So I've got this server loaded up. You can see it doesn't have much inside of it, just a local project and a local build. And it's testing out the connection right now. You can see it's successful now. So when it works, you'll get this little green message. So go ahead and click Save Changes. Now this is on my, the, the server that we've been working on all along. So I set this up on here to support users being able to search. Oops, but if I do it in the browser, not in the URL. When I hit P now, that search pop-up for projects, you'll notice now we have this new server here. So we have the TC10, which is what I've been working on this whole time. You'll see the projects that are involved there, and you can drill into that as much as you like. But now you can also go across servers and if I wanted to hop over to this local project and to this local build, I could just hit return here, and I'll be taken over to that new server that I started up. And then I can see the information here for this one. Now, if I'm on this one and I'd like to hop back, I have to set it up on here too. However, I already did that to save time. I set this one up as well. So now if I wanted to hop back, I could hop over to this deploy to staging build, and boom, I'm brought back over to this other server and I can go about my merry way. It's like for me as a user, I don't have to care where the server is at. I don't care that the URL is changing in the bar. I've got this nice pop-up search tool that allows me to just hop between servers. So now you have this support. I would encourage you to try this out if you have multiple servers. Um, by the way, when you're searching in here, um, you can kind of do like a camel case search. I'm doing a D space T space S, and you can see deploy to staging pops up, actually. Yeah, I'm not seeing a highlight there, but it is matching on deploy to staging here, I guess, and showing me that different option. So you might try out um, and actually refer to the documentation. I just noticed this when I was typing in it. And sometimes you can do some interesting camel case searching to quickly get to what you might want. So you can come down and hop to any of these projects. And, With that, um, I think I'm going to wrap up the demos. I do want to mention a few more things, though. Team City support, uh, actually, it's only 10 over 5. Let me just show one really brief thing. Uh, Team City now has cross platform support for Visual Studio Online. So, what I can do when I'm creating a project, um, let's say I come into my webinar project and I'm ed editing the settings here and I'm defining a new, a new build configuration or maybe even just a, a VCS route. Even if I go the manual route, and let's actually call this something like TFS, and I'm going to create a new VCS route here. This is what I wanted to show really quickly. I'm not going to create a build. I want to pick Team Foundation Server and click Create here. And what I want to show you is this Team City Server is actually running on, uh, I believe it's CentOS. So this is a Linux machine. And in the past, that would not have worked if you want TFS. But now you have support cross-platform to work with TFS so that your Team City server doesn't have to be running on a Windows machine. I can come down here, and I believe I'm going to have to type this in because I don't think I left this anywhere for myself, but Studio. 
and then I can come down here and specify a project. My pro I think I call it my first project is the root of this one. And then I need to put my credentials in. And I'm, I don't really remember what this is entirely, but let me see if this one works. Okay, let's paste that one in. I believe that's all I should have to do and hit test connection. This is as far as I'm gonna go because we're about out of time. This will reach out to TFS, which I have set up over in visualstudio.com and you can see we have a successful connection. So this is from a CentOS machine. And uh, just to prove it's working, if I mess up the root here, this will actually bring back an error for us. So great TFS support. Um, in addition to this, there's also TFS work item support, a lot like the issue tracker with GitHub, uh, though the nuances of it you'll have to look into because I didn't have time to create a demo for that here in the limited time we had. Uh, yeah, that's it for TFS. I do want to also mention the deployer plugin was brought in and is now bundled. So that means you now have bundled support for build steps, including um, FTP, SSH, um, and with SSH, files, SFTP and files, SSH exec, and deploying uh, war containers, or de sorry, deploying war files to containers like Tomcat. Uh, oh, and here's the warning message comes back, and you can see this is an error with regards to TFS. So we indeed are talking to a TFS server from a Linux machine. And with that, I am going to, oh, one more thing. I do want to point out if you're an EC2 cloud user, so you're using the cloud agents with EC2. You can now use um, user data. So you can plug in a script to, in, to um, customize an instance. You can plug that in from the Team City setup interface when you're defining a cloud profile. You can also tag instances. Uh, and you can also use a server uh, role, so a server IAM role, when you are defining permissions so that you don't have to put in credentials into Team City. You can just let the role that's been attached to your Team City server, if you're running your server out in Amazon as well, you can use the role that's associated with that machine to just grant uh, permissions to be able to, well, do whatever you define that role can do. So no more copying and pasting credentials over to TFS, or sorry, Team City. Okay, that's it. I'm going to wrap up here and just ask if there are any last questions that we want to address before we end. Yeah, actually, Wes, there are a lot of questions coming in, and uh, oh, okay. we okay. we uh, the, the team was able to answer most of them. So I think what we're going to do Wonderful. is we'll just post the questions uh, online on our blog platform uh, when we Sounds have good. the when we have the video uh, of this webinar available, and uh, so that everyone can go over them and just uh, or read them for the first time. So just to save time, we'll just I think we can stop yeah. here and wrap it up. Thanks a lot uh, to you, Wes. Thanks to everyone who was uh, watching this webinar. And thanks a lot to the team uh, who were answering the questions online.